While the philosopher Jerome Bruner says we act our way into knowing, out here in the West, we drive to find things out. The poet Richard Hugo did exactly this. With his fishing rod propped onto the seat next to him, he steered out to places in Washington State where he grew up, and later on to Idaho and Montana. Hugo was actually looking for places to fish, but he ended up in small towns. There, at the taverns, he met local people, and later, when he returned home, he wrote poems inspired by the towns. In my own little car, over the course of 10 years or so, I headed out to find these towns, sometimes with my husband Gary and my daughter Maddie, sometimes alone with my little dog Ida, and later with the great Northwest photographer Mary Ranlett. I drove and drove across miles of landscape without people, looking for the remnants of Hugo's poems. I've been to the barely alive town of Pony, Montana, a place that once housed 3,000 people, now home to fewer than 30, and to the town of Kapowson, Washington, where the suburbs of Tacoma and Olympia are filling in around the lake where Hugo once fished, and to the towns of Wisdom and Dixon and St. Ignatius, all set in wide Montana expanses. I've been to La Push and to Hola at the haunted edges of the Pacific, and to the mountain mining towns of Cataldo and Wallace. Seeing these places through the lens of Hugo's poems and now through the photographs of Mary Ranlett creates a sense of connection and continuity in a landscape so vast and diverse it seems to go on forever. Towns really are like poems, places that bloom and then diminish as the world carries on. The Car That Brought You Here Still Runs is a book for people who are, as I am, smitten with pilgrimages. 24 of Hugo's best poems about Northwest towns are reprinted here, and my own essays use these poems as an itinerary. As Mary Ranlett and I traveled, I wrote essays about the cultural and environmental histories of these places, and she took photographs. We began to see how each poem was a tiny map of a town that was far more complicated than the poem led on. My travels to the headwaters of Hugo's poems come from the same impulse, I think, that causes one to pause while passing an old school and think of going to a class reunion. Who knows where such inspirations come from? Suddenly, you're in the car with the poems on the driver's seat, it's raining, and you're headed out.